we experienced any affection from them. Never. And as years passed by, things got so better. There are certain things that I can't talk about. But uh, yeah, things went out of hand. And then I called up my father and I said, Dad, uh, I was 13. And I said, Dad, please come back. We need you here. This is the time we need you the most. So my dad uh, finally agreed to come back from Muscat to Hyderabad and uh, live with us. So he found a job, he came back. We were all excited. Generally, we were all excited. We were all excited. We were all excited. It's a very happy occasion when a father has gone for a long time and he's coming back home. The children are really excited. We were so happy. You know, this humiliation, this pain, and everything that we are experiencing is not going to be there any longer. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I was mistaken. We went through more hum humiliation and pain after my father came back from, from uh, Moscow. Every day, there was not a single day that we were not beaten up. He was drunk every day. He would just go off, take off. We would never know when he would come back home. And somebody would come and say, Are me nanagar, road me taagi, padi You know, they, these are the sights that I saw when I, when I was a young boy. It was such a painful experience for me. And sometimes, you know, I say, God, I don't know why you have to put us through all this. But I'm glad you put us through all this. He taught me life through all this pain that I experienced. So, you know, there were so many Christians in our neighborhood. And this is the most interesting part of my testimony. There were so many Christians in our neighborhood in Hyderabad that we used to live. There was not one man who came and gave the word of God to my father. Because they were all so busy with their lives. They had no time. You know, I always say, God, if today my father was alive and he would have still been in this situation, what you have done to me today, I would have done. I could have given that same joy and happiness to my father. You know, the word changed my life for eternity. Why it's not for a day or two. I'm saved. And I'm enjoying your salvation. My father could not enjoy it. Because there was nobody to come and give him salvation, to give him the word of God. Everybody was so busy. And you know, that it is such an irony that, you know, these people, every time my father used to drink or he used to beat us, he, they used to always say, like, look at that family. And these are Christians. Mind that I'm talking about. Forget the ones who don't know God, but I'm talking about our people. You know, our own people put us through so much of pain. And I said, God, if your people do not have compassion and love, who else in this world would have it? If I can't find it among your people, where can I go now? It was so traumatic. You know, we were, we were always discarded. We were always, you know, we never had friends because their father is a drunkard. Even friends were denied in my life. I could not go to anybody's house. I could not do normal things like any of you young children are doing today. I paid a big price. And all this is one decision that my mother took. One decision. That decision is without God. You pay a price when you, when you, when you think, oh, you're capable of doing everything and you don't need God, mind it, you're digging your own grave here. You're digging your own grave. So my father drank to death. He drank so much that it took his life away. And uh, it was all so sudden. We never had an opportunity to talk about anything to my father because he was always drunk. We could not share any happy moments, moments with my father. Man, I missed so much of my life with family. I never had this privilege, most of you that are sitting here and enjoying. Be thankful to God and to your parents for what they have given you and telling you. Be thankful to each one of them. And I know the pain of not having a mother and a father in my life. And I know how the world treats you when you don't have family. Oh, it's so humiliating, trust me. You know, when my father died, we didn't know what to do. 
it was all so sudden and uh, there was nobody we tried to reach the family neither his mother neither his brothers or neither my family came to see him three of us sitting there by his dead body we just don't know what to do i'm just lying there and i'm just wondering god what next what next god and then suddenly i remember my teacher who's a christian lady i ran i run up to her place and i say teacher you know my father died and we don't know what to do now so she came home she did most of the things that needed to be organized and she said what do you want to do now i used to remember my dad telling me when he used to be drunk he said nana nana no chachipothe nanu kalchi vai kandi kuchi vai endra anu i say look nana i matlu matladutunnaru you know if you go away who else is there for us you are the only hope we have i said that please don't say these things it hurts you know you are the only hope that we have no lack of me way my poor there is nobody to take care of us mom left the family the family is not with us you are not with your family we have nobody but you and if you go away don't say these words father you know it, it was a lot of painful experiences you know when my father was drunk old oh man boy things that he used to say so he died and i remembered these words that he wanted to be buried and not cremated and i told my teacher and she said okay why don't you go to the church and ask the pastor and it was a sunday and i ran me and my sisters barefoot from our house to the church it's about 15 minutes away we just ran to the church and we said pastor my dad passed away we would require some place for his body you know the first thing the pastor asked me what denomination does your father belong to <coughs> i said what is he a catholic is he a baptist is he this one is he that one i said no my father is a hindu my father does not belong to any denomination he's just a man who died and we need some place for his body because that was his last wish and you know it's not one one denomination that i went pleading i went to so many places believe me this is the truth i speak in the presence of god pastor lokal patuna vende we were crying and saying please this is my father's last wish give us some place we will give you money he just wants to be buried but everybody shut their doors there was not a single man who had come back no love no forgiveness nothing we came back home and we said god what kind of a world are we living in what kind of a world are we living in are nee manushule ila unte bayita vaalla ala pravartisthunnaduku nenu baadha padatledu devu and i'm really not feeling bad that people who don't know you are acting that way because your own kind are acting this way so it was a very bitter experience in my life it was a very painful experience in my life so as uh, night came uh, my teacher said you know we can keep the body for too long you have to do something so my pakin told there was a hindu family uh, they they spoke to some pujari and uh, they took us to the uh, smashana vatika right that's the right word mm-hmm. right smashana vatika akade ki tiske le we took my uh, father's body to the to the you know cremation ground and uh, they just started loading up everything onto my father piling all that wood and i was standing there and i said god no no god i don't want to be a part of this and that man comes achetro nadu a kagad is that he gives me the torch and he says where your father and i said no i can't i can't see my father where and i don't want to be the one who is going to be my father i said i can this is the most traumatic thing any child or anybody can experience i just put my foot down and i said you know ella indi kaachu mantaru na tandre indi ayyo aya kaalu kotru unde nenu chustu ninchaledu i pleaded with him and i said please don't allow me to do this I said, "Nin chayen, I can't do this. I can't burn my father's body." So, so that guy, 
he took the torch and he, he lit. And I was just standing there and, and I saw my father turn to ashes. And I said, wow, man, what, what kind of a world we are living in? You know, I came back home and I was so bitter. I was so bitter and I said, never again, God, I would ever speak to a Christian or to a pastor or whatever I would step into a church. Never again. I don't want to be a part of it. I was very bitter, I was very angry. I had this grudge. This, I was so, you know, I, I just thought, you know, I just felt like doing something nasty. But as years passed by, as a couple of, you know, my, my uh, after both this whole incident, my mother's sister uh, came down from Vishakhapatnam. She took us back to Wysag. And for a minute I thought, okay, probably somebody has compassion. Um, so we, 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 we were a little happy, we rejoiced uh, that, you know, okay, somebody from my mother's family at least has come forward uh, to support us. But when we went back to Wysag, it's the same old story. Santa Vidal, Santa Vidal, Parai Vidal, Parai Vidal. Apne to apne hote hai, Parai to Parai hai. You know, so they said so many nasty things to us. You know, when we used to eat food, they used to say things like Surendi, Pandula, Lutinas. You know, they're eating like pigs. So many nasty things were told to us. I said, you know, you know, my own family, my blood is talking to us like this. I was amazed. I was amazed that people in your own blood can be so vicious, so unforgiving, so ruthless, uncompassionate. Oh, so Madhigra, Dablu Nandavarku, Mahakamplami, everything was fine. And as soon as we were done with our money, we were asked to go out. Three children in their teens on the road, having no money having no shelter, having no help. You know, what a frightful world this is. You know, my poor sisters, oh man, uh, they had a couple of gold on them. We went and we sold it, we got some money. We found a place, temporary place, one room, one bathroom, a small little place that we rented out. And we started, uh, you know, our livelihood. And uh, we were all seeking for jobs because it was really difficult. We had no money. I'm telling you, zero. Zero money we had when we were left out of the streets to live our own lives. Because we became a burden to this world and to our family. We started understanding what real life is in this world. So the minute we stepped out, and I started finding jobs. You know, I used to I used to work for a company called Ekno, which used to market air curtains. Do you know what air curtains are? Like when you go into these malls, you have these blowers, you know, to stop the air conditioning from going out or the hot air from coming in. So I used to market those, and I used to be paid 400 rupees a month. And uh, my sisters, I'm telling you, this world is so mean, especially when women are alone without a father figure. Oh, believe me, it is the worst thing a woman can experience. You know, I'm telling you, all you children, you are what you are because of your surname. If that surname is taken away from you, believe me, you are nothing. You are nothing without your father's name. People identify you because of your father's name. Because of your father's name. Everything happens because of your father's name. And that's why I'm telling you, cherish what you have. You have to be thankful for what they have done to you. You have to be ever thankful all the days of your life. Till they are alive, you have to be thankful. 
I never had the opportunity to thank my father and mother. But you have, and don't waste it, please. You know, so my sisters started looking out for jobs. They used to go to different companies. Interview when somebody used to interview them, the boss or the so-called CEO or the MD of the company, the first thing they ask is, what does your mother and father do? That's the very first question. What is your background? India only it is very a common thing of asking, you know, your family background, no matter what. The minute my sisters used to say that, oh, we don't have family, I lost my mother and father, that man's thought process used to change like that. And then, you know, he was so nasty. He used to just, you know, <coughs> he knows now nobody can do anything to me. You know, these children don't have any backing. So I, even if I say anything, I can just, you know, get out of the situation. So why do or I'll keep you. You just sleep with me one night. Why do you want to work so hard? I'll take care of you. You're young, you're beautiful. You know, you could be with me. I'll pay you every month. And these are the kind of people my sisters encounter. 